Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe and explain the effect of catalysts on the rate of a reaction. You should then be able to describe the economic and environmental benefits of using catalysts. In a previous video we saw that for a chemical reaction to take place the reactant particles must collide in the correct orientation. The reactant particles must also collide with enough energy to start breaking the chemical bonds in the reactants. Scientists call this the activation energy. So the activation energy for a reaction can be defined as the minimum energy particles must have in order to start a reaction by breaking chemical bonds. So during any chemical reaction, chemical bonds must be broken and new chemical bonds must be formed. Now this brings us to a really important concept in chemistry. I'm showing you here two molecules that are about to react. As the two molecules collide, there comes a point where existing chemical bonds are in the process of breaking, and new chemical bonds are in the process of forming. Scientists call this point the transition state. Now the transition state is unstable and goes on to form the products. I'm showing you here an enthalpy diagram for an exothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction. The activation energy, or Ea, is the enthalpy difference between the reactants and the highest point on the curve. And you need to understand that the highest point on the curve represents the formation of the transition state. So going back to our definition of activation energy, we can add that the activation energy is the enthalpy difference between the reactants and the transition state. I'm showing you here enthalpy diagrams for two different exothermic reactions. The reaction on the left has a relatively low activation energy, so this reaction could take place quite rapidly at room temperature. That's because at room temperature, a relatively large proportion of reactant molecules will collide with enough energy to cross the activation energy barrier and react. The reaction on the right has a relatively high activation energy. At room temperature, this reaction should be relatively slow, as only a small proportion of reactant molecules will collide with enough energy to cross the activation energy barrier. OK, now one way to increase the rate of chemical reactions is to use a catalyst. Catalysts allow a reaction to take place via an alternative pathway, with a lower activation energy than the uncatalyzed reaction. I'm showing that on this enthalpy diagram. Without the catalyst, the reaction has a relatively high activation energy. This means that the particles need to collide with a large amount of energy to form the transition state and react. So this means that only a small proportion of particles have enough energy to cross the activation energy barrier. And because of this, the rate of reaction is relatively low. Here's the enthalpy diagram in the presence of a catalyst. You'll notice that we now refer to the activation energy as Ec. In the presence of a catalyst, the activation energy barrier is much lower. This means that a greater proportion of particles will collide with enough energy to form the transition state and react. So in this case, the rate of reaction will be greater than without a catalyst. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that catalysts are not used up in a reaction and are not permanently changed. So that means that catalysts can be reused. By using catalysts, we can make reactions take place rapidly, even at relatively low temperatures. This reduces the amount of energy needed by the chemical industry, which in turn reduces the need to burn fossil fuels to provide this energy. This saves money, providing an economic benefit. It also reduces carbon dioxide emissions, making the chemical industry more sustainable. However, some catalysts are toxic, so this negative aspect needs to be weighed against the benefits. In the next video, we look at homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysts.